black women do not have a problem with the passport bros what we have a problem with is in on black women as a reason to go over to take advantage of women who are not financially stable you're going over there to find somebody who's going to treat you like a king and all your mediocrity don't blame us for that i gotta go off of what i've seen they cater to you to a t i know someone that has married someone and brought her over here it looks like she's out of magazine she will be a model over here right do you think if she was born in america she would be with him no she would not be with him do you know why <laughs> because they're poor y'all are taking advantage of these women blaming us black women are this black women are that as if we're causing you to take advantage of these women leave us the f out of it y'all so i have a serious question and i'm, I'm not even being sarcastic y'all know i like to play around and act dumb why is it that some black women will say Oh, black men ain't shit. All they are is abusers. They leave their kids, all this stuff, right? And I hear it all the time. I'm not saying every black woman, because again, I'm black. I don't say shit like that. And I have a lot of friends who are black women who don't talk like that. So I'm not saying all black women, because there's some beautiful ones out there. But why do y'all say that and scream that at the top of your lungs? But when he's with a white girl or a Latina, now it's, mm, she's taking our man. But it's like, you don't even want them. So why is it when another woman has them and is cherishing them, now you want that man? Why? Because you see all the work she's putting into that man and you see him glowing from all the sucky she's giving him? Make it make sense. Do you really want black men or not? Or are you just saying that because of the two black men that hurt you? Or is it because you don't have a dad? I'm not trying to say this to be disrespectful. It's just a lot of women I come across don't have fathers. And you know how many black women are in my DMs tell me that all the time? They've never had healthy masculinity. So really think about that. Not even two months. I think it's... One month ago, that's when I came to know about it. And after listening and watching a lot of videos, I've come to realize that these men are very innocent. Some are good. They are wonderful people. And all they want is care and love. So why is it so hard for you to do that? And why do you keep making these hateful videos if you don't want them? We want them. They are good people. They are wonderful people. So... What is wrong with that? If you cannot cook, if you cannot clean as a woman, actually, how do you take care of your hygiene? Hmm? How do you clean that wig? How do you clean those nails? Hmm? I don't understand you, ladies. Oh, they are going overseas for women that are more beatable. <laughs> Honestly, what you're doing to yourself, you're humiliating yourself. Hmm? You are. There's no way you can insult your fellow women just because we are submissive. Do you even read your Bibles? A woman was meant to be submissive. And leadership, it's for men. Just because you're making money doesn't make you a man. And if you feel like you're a man, please get your girlfriend pregnant. And please let us know. From there, we will respect you. But all I can say... Please let us be, let the passport bros be, and for the passport bros, kings, you are wonderful, please don't sit up. The disrespect from the African American women, American women, when it comes to the passport bros, you might ask like, where did this- There was a book by an unknown black female author named Michelle Wallace that was heavily promoted by white society called Black Macho. This book was the beginning of the white funded black male bashing black gender war wave that took off in the 80s. The main person pushing this book was a CIA-affiliated white feminist named Gloria Steinem. So she kind of really objectified and dehumanized black men in a particular way, but it was a way that was popular that gravitated, people gravitated toward it. And I often say from that to Oprah, right, Oprah becomes a spigot, so to speak, a, a faucet that opens that up because she introduces these fairly obscure black feminist talking points to the mainstream. And then from there, it's being digested. So now you have women who will not call themselves feminists, who have never read a feminist book, but have feminist talking points because they're coming out of that mainstream culture that really starts with uh, Indashake and Williams and filters through Oprah. And so that dynamic creates this snowball of black feminism that we're still seeing that's rooted in what we call an anti-black misandry, a hatred, a hatred really of black men. Gloria Steinem worked for the CIA while she was in college. She was recruited in college. And she was outed by a feminist group called Red Stockings. Red Stockings blew the lid off of that in the village voice. As an insider, African person, I understand that this is a sensitive topic. 
and there are many different perspectives and opinions on it. However, I will do my best to provide an objective analysis and suggest potential solutions to the issue of division among my African people, African American uh, men and women community. I want peace, unity, and progress in the community for both my brothers and sisters to understand each other and end this conflict of sexes. Black women need to stop disrespecting emotionally, abusing, and turning their back on black men and unite with us so we can be better protectors for them. They need to stop betraying and disrespecting black men and black men need to focus and do better a uh, version of themselves and treat African-American women well, all right? We also have to contribute. Firstly, it is important to acknowledge that there is a history of systemic racism and discrimination in America that has disproportionately affected Amer uh, African-Americans. This has led to a sense of frustration and anger among many members of the community, which can sometimes manifest as a conflict between different groups, all right? It is also important to recognize that both African-American men and women have faced unique challenges and struggle as a result of this history of racism and discrimination. Black men have experienced higher rates of incarceration, police brutality, and economic uh, disadvantage, while black women have faced issues such as gender discrimination, reproductive health disparities, and the uh, burden of being the primary caretakers for their family. All right? Despite uh, these differences, it is crucial that African-American men and women come together to address the issues facing our community. This is because the fight for racial equality and justice cannot be won without collective action, unity, and solidarity. To achieve this unity, both men and women and women need to approach each other with respect and empathy. This means listening to each other's perspective, acknowledging each other's struggles, and recognizing each other's strengths. All right? It is also important for men to recognize the leadership role that uh, women you know, have played in the struggle for racial uh, justice throughout the history. Women such as Sojourney Truth, Harriet Tubman, and Angela Davis have been instrumental in advancing the cause of black liberation, and their contributions should be celebrated and respected. At the same time, it is important for women to recognize the valuable role that men can play in the community as leaders and mentors. African-American men can provide guidance and support for young people in the community and can serve as a role model for positive behavior and values. To foster the, uh, this kind of uh, mutual respect and collaboration, it is important for both men and women to actively work to undo the toxic gender norms and the stereotypes that have historically divided us. This means challenging harmful attitudes and behaviors that perpetuate sexism, misandry, and misogyny, and working to create a culture of respect and equality. In addition, it is important for both men and women to be willing to forgive each other and move past past conflict and disagreements. This requires a willingness to listen and to empathize and to recognize each other's humanity. Ultimately, the key to building a strong and united African-American community is by recognizing that we all have a stake in this fight for racial justice and equality. And that we need each other support and cooperation to achieve his goals. We must recognize that our struggles and challenges are interconnected and that we cannot achieve true liberation and equality by fighting each other. All right? 
One potential solution to promote unity within the African American community is through education and awareness. We must educate ourselves and each other about the history of our community and the struggles that we have faced. This will help us to understand each other's perspective and struggles and to work together towards common goals. All right, my people. Another potential solution is through community building initiatives. All right. That will bring men and women together to work towards common goals. This could include mentorship programs that pair young people with positive role models in the community by the community service project that bring people together to work towards a shared goal and social events that celebrate and promote unity within the community. It is important to recognize that there are no easy solutions to the issue of division within the African American community. However, by working together with empathy, respect, and the willingness to listen and learn from each other, we can overcome these divisions and to build a stronger and more united community. To wrap it up, it is important for African American men and women to put aside our differences and work together towards common goals, including the fight for racial justice and equality and support each other. This requires mutual respect, empathy, and the willingness to listen and learn from each other through education, community building, initiative, and a commitment to working together forever. We can overcome the division and that exists within our community and build a stronger and more united future for black women and black men. Certainly, one of the key issues that contribute to the division between African American men and women is the legacy of lack of patriarchal genders, norms, and the stereotypes that uh, have you know, historically been enforced in the community about women don't need a man. These norms have often led to the marginalization and oppression of men, African American men, leading to creation of baby mamas culture, uh, you know, men becoming homeless as well as the perpetuation of the harmful attitudes and behavior towards them. Because women choose to get government assistance over their men. That's, that was diabolic. To overcome these norms, it is important for women to recognize the valuable contribution that men have made to the struggle for the racial justice and to actively work to support and uplift men. This means listening to their men's, the men's perspective, acknowledging their struggle and working to create a culture of respect and equality towards men. It is also support important for women to recognize the valuable leadership role that men can play in the community and to work collaboratively with men towards common goals. This requires a willingness to challenge harmful attitudes and behaviors towards men coming from other women and to recognize their humanity and contributions. Another key issue that contributes to the division between African American men and women is the impact of systemic racism and discrimination. Black men and women have faced unique challenges and struggles as a result of this history, and these struggles can sometimes lead to conflict and division within the community. The address I mean, to address this issue, it is important for both men and women to recognize and acknowledge each other's struggle and to work together to overcome the challenges that we face. This means supporting each other's effort to achieve equality and justice and recognizing that our struggles are interconnected and cannot be won in isolation. Ultimately, achieving unity within the African American community requires a willingness to listen and learn from each other and to approach each other with empathy 
and respect. It requires commitment to challenge harmful gender norms, again, and stereotypes, and to working collaboratively towards common goals. By doing so, we can build a stronger and more united community and create a future in which all members of the community can thrive and achieve their full potential. Another important aspect of promoting unity within the African American community is the, the need to address the issue of internalized you know, oppression. Internalized oppression refers to the ways in which members of a marginalized group may come to believe that they come to believe and internalize negative stereotypes and attitudes about their own group. In the case of African American men and women, internalized oppression can lead to self hatred, low self esteem, and a lack of trust and support for each other. This can perpetuate the cycle of division and conflict within the community and prevent us from working together towards common goals. To address this issue, it is important for members of the community to engage in self-reflection and self-care practices that promote self-love and self-respect. This can include activities such as therapy, mindfulness practices, and community building events that promote positive self-image and self-esteem. In addition, it is important for the community to recognize and challenge the ways in which internalized oppression may manifest in our attitudes and behaviors towards each other. This means act actively working to promote positive and affirming messages about our community and our collective history and challenging negative stereotypes and attitudes that may perpetuate division and conflict. Finally, it is important to recognize that achieving unity within the African American community requires a commitment to ongoing dialogue and communication. This means creating safe spaces for members of the community to come together and discuss our experiences and perspective and working to build bridges of understanding and empathy between different groups, not aiding each other. By doing so, we can create a future in which all members of the African American community feel valued, respected, and supported, and in which we are all able to work together towards common goals of equality, justice, and liberation. Let's stay together, brothers and sisters, Unity is the only way. Peace.